Okay everyone, now this is the uh, second part of our stirred tank vessel problem. So far just to give you a recap, we started off with a mass balance and that gave us one equation and two unknowns. The mass in the tank and the outlet volumetric flow rate. Now the first equation was gonna was responsible for giving us the mass inside the tank. We needed a new equation for the outlet flow rate, the outlet volumetric flow rate. So we decided we um, our next step was to use the valve equation. We came up with a very generic commercial. This is the most generic form of all the valve equations for all the, the, the majority of the control valves that are used in industry. And after doing some substitutions, this was our this was like the final form of the the final form of our equation. Okay, so far we have two equations, but three unknowns. Right now we have our equation for the outlet flow rate. The next equation we need for is the change in pressure. We're talking about the change in just to give you a visual visual. We're talking about the change in pressure at the uh, inlet of the valve and the outlet of the valve. That's the delta P that we require, okay? This is the change in pressure that we're looking for. And in this problem, we know that our discharge is at atmospheric pressure. So we're gonna need to know the hydrostatic pressure, which will be determined by the height of the fluid column. And obviously the top is open to atmosphere as I have stated here already. So that is gonna be the change in pressure. All right, let's move forward. The change in pressure will be obtained. Change in pressure. Delta P will be equal to P discharge minus P upstream or p inlet whichever one you wanna it, the notation the uh, terminology is interchange uh, is interchangeable for a valve i'm just going to try to use the most um, simple the most um not not went to college statement i could use because you'll be dealing with a lot of technicians a lot of uh operators who would not have all these fancy terminologies so we're just going to go with the most simple now the outlet pressure as we've discussed the discharge pressure we're discharging an atmosphere. And the pressure at the inlet is gonna be the atmospheric pressure plus the hydrostatic pressure, which is just gonna be density times gravity and the height in the column. Pressures PATMs cancel out and our final form of the equation, our perfect form, if you watch Dragon Ball Z, our perfect form of the equation is as given here. <coughs> Now, okay, here is what what the hell, man. Now we have an other unknown, okay? Three equations, three equations and four unknowns. It is what it is, but we'll have to make do with what it is, okay? So this equation, the third equation, is gonna give us the change in pressure. But we still have, we still need now, now we need another equation for the height of tank and the height of tank is related to the volume inside the tank so this is just going to be a simple geometry problem a simple high school geometry problem yeah you're probably wondering i would never use any of these geometric formulas when i go to when i go to work well guess what well guess what a volume this is basically the volume of a constant of a constant cross section constant cross section uh, shape of any constant cross section shape in 3d i'm just stating the obvious because there will be some people who will have trouble finding this trouble understanding this and there's no harm in that there is absolutely no harm in that it is not your fault i am not assuming that you know anything prior uh there was at one one time when we were all good at calc but now 
most of us are not so good at calc and that's okay for equations but now the volume in the tank is changing with respect to time right the cross-sectional area is constant the cross-sectional area can be just we just have to measure the diameter we just need to measure the diameter of our tank and once we have the diameter it's game over five unknowns the unknown the this equation is going to be responsible for giving me the height of the tank and now i need an equation for the volume in the tank okay and the volume in the tank i have already accounted for the mass inside the tank right i've already accounted for the mass inside the tank and i also know the density well guess what it's gen chem all over again isn't that fun well for some of us it's fun at least so volume in the tank is just going to be the mass inside the tank that changes with time divided by uh yes divided by the density of the fluid we've already accounted for this and this has been already accounted for in our process information bravo ladies and gentlemen your system is now fully specified okay okay hold on hold on now everything is good this equation accounts for volume of time but this entire problem is a heating problem it's a stirred tank heating vessel right now heating if heating is involved we need to uh, we'll probably need to write an energy balance as well because the time the temperature the outlet temperature can vary depending on different disturbances right so our energy balance it's a uh, the change in internal energy we're neglecting all the changes in the uh, mechanical energy we're just going to deal with the internal energy of our system will be equal to the rate of energy that is being added to our system minus the rate of energy that is being removed from our system removed or out energy now the way let's see let's go back a little we're always gonna it's a good practice it's a good practice to keep referring back to your schematic because that's where all of you all of the information you need is given so we know that a stream is going in the stream contains enthalpy right there is a energy going into the system via the stream and there is energy leaving the system via the exit stream right and we have these rods okay we have these rods and we're gonna assume that the heat transfer coefficient between the air and the liquid is negligible so the heat transfer coefficient between air and the fluid is approximately zero so that we're gonna ignore the heat effects we're gonna ignore all the heat that escapes to air that's not a very good assumption that is not a very good assumption again it depends on the fluid if you have a more volatile fluid then you will have to account for that but we're dealing with a more we're dealing with a non-volatile fluid here okay so just make sure that you're rationalizing all of the assumptions that you're making so this shall be rewritten as density times volume that is mass times actually i'm just going to write it as the mass in tank because that will be easier for you guys the mass inside the tank times the heat capacity the specific heat capacity multiplied by t minus a reference temperature because in order to assign an internal energy value you need, you need a reference temperature right but i'll show you how to get rid of this in just a second we have a stream coming in that's going to be rho times q the mass flow rate times cp multiplied by t the inlet temperature was t as i have noted above minus t ref the exit stream all these variables have already been accounted for q out cp uh, t out oh this is going to be the t out and the t inside the tank are going to be the same you know why well mixed 
okay all right now if I just tidy up this equation I'm gonna get um, CP and if I expand this derivative term you'll see that oh, the reference temperature is a constant the reference temperature is not we're not spontaneously changing a reference temperature that would be an idiotic thing to do so we're just gonna ignore the changes in the reference temperature which means your derivative is gonna simplify to the following config m c p t out t out okay and here we have here we have rho q c p t ref minus t ref okay let me just see if i can cancel out anything right now no no i'm just gonna leave it as, as it is that's fine that's okay i all right s t ref plus q dot okay now um you can divide both sides by cp or you can just leave it at, leave it as it is this is perfectly fine because um, in the end you're the if you're taking a numerical approach if you're taking a numerical approach then simplifying a having the derivative term on the left hand side or you can let me just divide the CP out oh I forgot a CP here but that works okay now that I have the derivative term on the left hand side and this is going to work well with all my numerical approaches I'm going to use my ODE solvers in MATLAB I'm going to use Simulink and all the, I can even use I can even use Excel with a dedicated um, Rangakata or any numerical approach Rangakata Euler those are that comes later all of this comes later the other approach you can take is analytical for that, if you want to solve this analytically, you'll have to use a lot of Taylor series. Might want to refresh on that. Taylor series just first order, not second order. That will be insane. Taylor series and Laplace transforms. So if you want to take the analytical approach, these, these are going to be the tools that you're going to handle, you're going to play with. However, analytical solutions are some require a lot of assumptions they require a lot of assumptions which was classically now in the in classical engineering this was bueno in classical engineering this was bueno but now we have computers our home computers are more powerful than the uh, computer that was responsible for the Apollo mission. Okay, so now this is more practical. And if anybody tells you, if anybody tries to tell you otherwise, just go ask a uh, process control engineer that works at, that maybe works at Dow, BASF, and I'm sure, I'm sure most of them will take, will take the same approach as we're going to take. All right. And just to conclude this, we have now six equations and six unknowns. The final equation, the new unknown that we've introduced, is the t out, which changes with time. Let me just make that explicit for you guys. t out is a time dependent variable. Don't forget that. t, t out, and t, okay, that's the inlet temperature, all right? And t out is our temperature all right um just to uh, i've boxed all the equations here M mass balance done valve equation done uh, the change in pressure taken care of the height the level in the tank taken care of um oh the volume in the tank also taken care of since the mass was already taken care of and the energy along with the uh, outlet temperature has everything has been laid out so I hope this was helpful for all of you and we're gonna do a couple of more examples before moving on to solution approaches so thanks for your kind attention